Uh, thanks so much, Naomi. Uh, <clears throat> uh, again, my name is June Dam. Uh, I'm with uh, <coughs> Bitcash, DAC, and uh, 100X is the exchange. And um, <coughs> just a little bit about myself. You know, I've um, uh, been in the financial services uh, industry for about a decade uh, after graduating from business school and always had a passion and, and, and talent for business, finance, economics, investments. <coughs> and, uh, you know, around early 2000 and, and mid-2000, I started to look more into our monetary system and really, you know, looked hard at, you know, how our uh, economy, economy works. And so, <coughs> so um, and there was, uh, it was shocking to understand, you know, how much power these, the banking cartel and the government had over our economic lives and how it favored, you know, the wealthy versus uh, the middle class and the poor. So uh, really frustrated, you know, 2008 and nine, there was a financial crisis and that was a, another kind of uh, big signal that things were fundamentally wrong with our economy. So, uh, and then crypto came along, right? Uh, and, you know, I just saw the whole potential of what it could be uh, for our economy and our society. And so uh, went all in, in um, working on blockchain and cryptocurrency. So. So, you know, oftentimes people ask, you know, what's what's blockchain's killer app? What's what's Bitcoin's killer app? Uh, and then, you know, it's you know, some people have a hard time figuring it out because you know we don't have, I guess, this mainstream adoption yet. <coughs> and then, you know, uh, I guess humorously, you know, someone asked uh, Samson now, you know, what's what's Bitcoin's killer app? It's and he said uh, economic collapse, right? And I thought that was funny, <coughs> but. But, you know, really it is the first killer app, whoops, let me go back, is <clears throat> money. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is a new money that we can all use. It's sovereign where no one can limit you. No one can freeze you. <clears throat> you don't have to wait and, you know, go to an ATM. It's, it's money that you can store on your phone or on your computer, and it's powerful. No one can take that away from you. And you could be anywhere around the world, and you could send it to anyone, anyone else around the world <coughs> at very low cost and instantaneously, right? So it's very powerful. And so that's the first killer app. So we already have a killer app in crypto and Bitcoin. Just say it's money. It's a new money, right? Uh, <coughs> so the second killer app is, you know, what we had in Ethereum. In 2017, we had the big ICO boom. People were able to raise billions of dollars, over 14 billion in the last few years uh, for their projects, right? These decentralized projects, applications. And that's powerful because you had a trusted way of sending people money from anywhere around the world to support their project. <clears throat> and it disrupted venture capital because, you know, typically it would be some select circle in Silicon Valley that you'd have to kind of, you know, you know, cater, I mean, just ask and, and it would be very difficult. But now it's like anywhere around the world you could have you know, people from developing nations with, with projects that could get funded and vice versa, they can invest and participate in, in the success of a, of, of, of a platform, right? <clears throat> so this is very powerful and you know, there's regulatory kind of headwinds on it, but this is still a killer application that I think is, is gonna be, continue to be uh, one of the best use cases of it. So that's another killer app. <clears throat> Third killer app I say is tokenization. So we had these decentralized platforms. Uh, EOS and Ethereum are general purpose computing platforms that had a token and now people who've invested or bought these tokens could participate or uh, use this infrastructure as a utility. <clears throat> but it was the idea that you could tokenize these systems, digital systems, and <clears throat> and kind of create value that way and let people participate in the value of the platform. <clears throat> and so tokenization really uh, is, is natural for digital systems like cryptocurrencies, but uh, you also have NFTs, you know, there's digital representations like digital art or unique um, art of artifacts or uh, anything digital that, um, you know, you can, you can really find a way to get uh, <coughs> a unique um, asset for, and, and that's what NFTs are, non-fungible tokens. And so that's another huge part of tokenization. And then 
real world assets. We have, you know, you could put real estate in a trust and fractionalize that. And so, it, you know, you could imagine everybody in this room buying a little piece of a property here, let's say in Vegas, right? Let's say, a, you know, a big uh, kind of, I don't know, MGM Grand or like a hotel. Like you could do those kinds of things. Fractionalize, you know, gold, <coughs> um, you know, I guess, you know, anything you could think of in, in the real world. Uh, commodities, I, I know someone had a project that were, that were trying to create a commodity out of diamonds. So get a lot of varying value diamonds together in a bunch and, and try to have them all mixed together to have a certain value. And so you could, you could do those kinds of things. So, <coughs> so, um, so it, naturally it's investment and you know I've been in the financial services industry so you could imagine you know hey these are projects that you could invest in for the long run you could imagine if you have a 401k you know you have your balance of an asset allocation for stocks and bonds and now you have all these other tokens that you can also add to your portfolio you might have some sort of uh, this technology allows for automated rebalancing and and uh, just in a smart contract so you could see the future is uh, with, you know, of investments going to look a lot different with this technology. Um, exchange is another, another natural killer application. I mean, think about Binance. I mean, they, they made more profit in Q1 of 2018 than Deutsche Bank, which has been around for 140 years. And Binance as a startup has been around for two years. <coughs> BitMEX is a futures exchange, and they, they did a $1 trillion of volume in the last year. $1 trillion with a T, so... And stable coins are the kind of the latest killer app. I say it's going to make uh, crypto useful. So Tether uh, is actually more popular than Bitcoin to do a lot of cross-border payments because there's no volatility. And so now <laughs> payments and remittance, which I'll talk about, uh, is what stable coins are going to open up. And uh, it's another killer application of blockchain. Um, and naturally, if you, you have stable coins that represent fiat currencies, you can imagine you can create a fiat uh, stable coin for you know all the countries around the world and that's natural for forex so you can imagine hey if I had an app uh, traveling around the world you know with smart contracts and stable coins you can actually just press a button and wherever you are you'll get the local currency and 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 be able to uh, seamlessly uh, change and exchange between any currency around the world without all the fees that banks charge so it's another uh, use case payments you know uh, Banks make a lot of money off payments, and 3% per credit card a transaction is a lot. <laughs> and um, so, you know, crypto is going to really disrupt that and minimize the cost for, for sending payments uh, around the world. Remittance for people who work overseas or want to send money back, you know, that's, <laughs> uh, that's a huge market, half a trillion. So, uh, and also businesses do remittance as well. And Tether is often used, um, you know, there's, you know, when... A Chinese uh, exporter wants, you know, they, they're, they're sending goods to Russia, let's say, and, and they had to move money back and they use Tether. I mean, it's like tens of millions of dollars every day. Real world use case. <coughs> Another killer application is accounting because, you know, what is blockchain, right? So it's a ledger, right? And, and it's kind of funny to think it's right in front of our eyes. You could do accounting auto automatically j just by putting it on a blockchain, right? So... <clears throat> so accounting is a, a, a huge, uh, just natural uh, application for blockchain. Insurance, it's another uh, big, big, big market. And you imagine, you know, uh, there's something called a mutual insurance companies you might have heard of. You might be uh, have, you know, a policy with them where, you know, it used to not be where, you know, com companies uh, and corporations would make a profit off of people. It would just be people coming together as policyholders in a mutual insurance company and reaping the rewards and the dividends from, from the actual insurance company. And so, um, <coughs> so it's a natural uh, blockchain application because we can all do that with smart contracts. Lendings, another big one. Um, and <coughs> let me see. Trade finance is more of a commercial um, application that I... Uh, that's really big in business for you know importers, exporters, and being able to finance uh, the whole sales cycle, or just to help shorten the the uh, these sales cycles so that people could get money quicker uh, and not have to wait for products to to go through um, this whole cycle. So um, 
And so finally, you know, this is, you know, DeFi is a killer app. I, I mentioned over 10 applications uh, of, of decentral, decentralized financial applications. And so I think DeFi in general is blockchain's killer app. And the last note I wanted to talk about is, you know, hey, we're, we're, we have, uh, we could stay with the traditional systems and build and try to integrate, or we could create a new parallel system. And I, I'd say, hey, if we have like a new kind of internal combustion engine, we don't want to put that in a, in a horse carriage. We, we could build it entirely a new system. And so that's, that's what we're, we're trying to do, um, just build a new economy based on new sovereign money build a new financial platform on top of that. And so I uh, hope you guys can join us in, in this effort to, to uh, get, give uh, DeFi out to the world and empower everybody in the world. So thank you very much. That's, that's how you <laughs> get a hold of me. <laughs>